the socially triggered and this video is going to be a response video to app uh, asap sciences uh the biggest lie about climate change uh so they're gonna do a supposedly science video on uh on climate change and i just want to respond to it because it's 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 very typical of uh, videos on climate change where they don't seem to have all the facts or they don't really know what they're talking about. And I just wanted to sort of display it and uh, give you a sense of uh, the propaganda that people put out about climate change. So I'm just going to play the video for you. This is the story of how your safety and future finances were robbed without you ever really noticing. Back in the 70s, everyone was like, Please. But there was also the creation of an energy company called Exxon. They were obsessed with what we are still obsessed with now, innovation. So the oil company Exxon decided to invest in science. Scientists hired by Exxon. Again, Exxon's very own scientists were the first to present a series of groundbreaking papers explaining that burning fossil fuels will influence the climate as the carbon dioxide released will cause a greenhouse effect. Isn't it ironic, don't you think, that oil companies discovered climate change? This happened right in the early 19... So basically what he's saying right now is the first, the very first fact that he's trying to give is a total mistake. It's not true. It's just not factually true. Um, there was actually a scientist in 1896 uh, who discovered uh, climate change, that, uh, that if you burn fossil fuel, that it could in create what's called the greenhouse effect, uh, and that would you know, potentially heat up the earth. Okay, so it wasn't Exxon that discovered this. <laughs> Uh, they didn't discover it. It was well known well before that. You know, there was lots of scientists talking about it in, even in the 50s. So as I said, it was 100 years earlier that the idea of uh, the greenhouse effect was known. Uh, and it was popularized in the 50s. So all of this right now is just a lie. So we'll play more of his video and I'll show you how each of the things he's saying just aren't true. Um, the point that he's trying to make, though, is that Exxon was the one that discovered climate change. And when they discovered it, they're going to try to hide it because they're an evil oil company. And this is another narrative that uh, gets pushed by climate, by climate uh, like enthusiasts. I don't know that they're <laughs> that they're trying to pitch this thing, and they're uh, they're all hysterical about it that the world's going to end in 12 years and all that kind of wonderful stuff. But it's all based on misinformation. Uh, they just don't understand the science. So let's try to understand what's really going on here. So let's, I'll, I'll play more of their video. In the 80s, just as the price of oil was decreasing. So the higher ups at Exxon chose to ignore the information and instead focus on growing the business. They did ask the scientists to keep looking into it. In 1982, their own scientists again came back, this time with more thorough research saying, yep, it was worse than they thought. Based on what Exxon was planning to do in regards to fossil fuel extraction would warm the climate, cause sea levels to rise, and increase deadly droughts. Humans will suffer effects which will be indeed... Okay, I just want to go over those things. Um... So a couple of things that they say here, they, they said that we'll experience more droughts, more forest fires, and more flooding, that kind of, those kind of, those are the typical things, the, the Armageddon of climate change. <laughs> um, the fact though, is the earth is actually becoming greener. And you can test this yourself. You can actually see this yourself. There's satellite imagery of the earth where we can actually look at the fact that the earth is getting greener. And part of the reason for the greening of the earth is that uh, when you produce CO2, it's a greenhouse gas in, in the respect that it actually helps things grow. Um, so basically what happens is uh, plants grow better when they have more CO2. It just, it's, it's what they need to grow. So uh, the earth is actually becoming greener. And because of that, we're getting less droughts. Um, the forest fire one is actually kind of a mis misunderstanding too of the science. So what they do is they usually use a weird date. 
uh, one of the things that they'll do is they'll look at forest fires since 1980. And the reason they pick 1980 was that was sort of like a, like an all-time low in terms of the forest fire rates. So if you pick a really, really low time when there was very few forest fires, uh, historically low, and then you use that as like the baseline, <laughs> then anything above that looks like, oh, there's an increase in forest fires. Well, if you look at uh, the norm, the 100-year the trend before that time period, you'll actually see that, um, that we are receiving about 80% less forest fires in the world than before. Now you might be saying, well, isn't the Amazon burning and all this kind of stuff? Well, actually forest fires are part of nature's cycle. Uh, what it does is forest fires actually um, clear out old kind of dead wood and allow for new growth to occur. So forest fires are actually a good thing and they happen naturally. Uh, and that's, it happens in the Amazon. And the forest fires in the Amazon this year were actually less than previous years and are a little bit low for historical measure, but are totally within the norm. They're not that unusual. So the point is, it's not that we're getting more forest fires. It's actually we're kind of historical lows for forest fires. Uh, the other thing that they mentioned is uh, the rise of sea levels. Now, the weirdest thing is actually sea levels are rising, and the science is very clear about that. But sea levels have been rising for the last few thousand years, for well before even man had major civilizations. And they've been rising at a consistent rate. I think it's like two millimeters per year or something like that. It's like, it's, it's a small amount, but over time it does, count, it does add up. Um, but the point is, it's not uh, unusual. It's, it's actually very steady. It hasn't spiked in any, any particular way. Um, and there's no, there's no change in the rise of water levels. It's just a consistent rate. And I'm not sure why it goes up, to tell you the truth, but uh, it's, it does just naturally go up. It's been, the sea levels have been rising for many years now. Uh, the weird thing is, um, it's not, due to ice melting. One of the misunderstandings about ice <laughs> is that if you melt ice, then all of a sudden there's going to be more water on the planet and that's going to cause the sea levels to rise. Well, that doesn't work that way. Uh, think about it this way. If you take a glass of water and you put some ice in it and you look at the level of the glass of the water uh, and, the, and watch it as the ice melts, the water level will not change. I mean, it might evaporate a bit, but but uh, it won't. Uh, it shouldn't change too much as long as you you account for evaporation, uh, because the water when it's frozen uh, actually takes up more space, and then when it melt and what'll happen is it'll actually be slightly above uh, the actual water line, so ice floats right, and when ice melts, it is just taking up the, it, really the volume is, is the same. So it, it, the water level just doesn't change. So all of these things are totally crazy. So that's, that's just some of the, of the craziness that's being propagandized to all these people that are watching these supposedly science videos. So um, let's continue on with his video. catastrophic, so the scientists pitched a major reduction in fossil fuel combustion. An email from Lenny Bernstein, a former employee of Exxon, wrote, In the 1980s, Exxon needed to understand the potential for concerns about climate change to lead to regulation of potential projects. They were well ahead of the rest of the industry in this awareness. If Exxon wanted to be innovators so bad, maybe they would have taken this moment to diversify the energy sector, invest in alternative Okay, I just want to address this. This is kind of one of those weird ones. Um, they basically were well ahead of the industry, you know, um, supposedly, according to this narrative, uh, and they could have diversified, okay? Now, here's what you have to understand about fossil fuels. Let's say the climate, 
you know, the climate pushers, I don't know what to call them, but they're kind of climate pushers. They really push this whole idea of climate change. Um, let's say they're right. Let's say the world's going to burn up, whatever. I don't know. Like, you have to understand the, 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 the temperature, even according to the most uh, hardened believers of climate change, has only risen by one degree Celsius, okay, in the last hundred years. Okay, so let's say that they are right. It's risen by hundred uh, by one degree in the last hundred years. Well, you got to calculate. Well, how much death has resulted from that? Well, not much, <laughs> or none actually. Uh, the the deaths due to like all these things that they relate to climate change have actually gone down. Um, what has gone up? is life expectancy, um, population has gone up dramatically in the last hundred years. I mean, it was around a billion in the early part of the 19th century. Now it's around seven, almost eight, it's hovering around eight almost. It's going to be eight billion soon. So our population has expanded very, very rapidly. But we are at the point where we could actually solve world hunger. Uh, we have all these things that are going on. And the point is, when you look at it, the reason why we can support more people on the planet, the reason why we can do all these wonderful things and less people are dying is due to fossil fuels and the energy that they produce. So what happens is, uh, uh, if you look at agricultural, if you look at uh, transportation, you look at all these things that allow us to feed the planet, those are all coming from fossil fuels. So another thing, like just so you understand, uh, the world produces carbon dioxide. The earth produces it naturally. Uh, it produces it from volcanoes. It produces it from the oceans where there's uh, CO2 that diffuses out and actually goes into the atmosphere. And these are the biggest sources of carbon dioxide, natural carbon dioxide that's produced every year. Now, humans contribute to some of that production of CO2, and it works out to being about 3.5% of all that natural CO2 production. Well, we contribute an extra 3.5%, uh, very small amount. Okay, so if you, if you remove fossil fuel production, then uh, you will have uh, an issue where probably half the world will starve to death because we won't be able to produce food, we won't be able to transport food, we won't have all these things because all of our energy, majority of it, is coming from fossil fuels. Like all these other things that we've invested billions in haven't produced very much energy and not consistent energy. Try to run boats like large shipping containers on solar it just doesn't work <laughs> you know you need uh, consistent energy sources or cons so fossil fuel is like the, the the best source of energy that we have other other, other than nuclear and nuclear has been like they, they've been discouraging nuclear for so long so it's really frustrating because these environmentalists will will They'll talk about, you know, diversifying, and they only talk about wind, solar, <laughs> and those kind of things, where, where nuclear would probably be the solution that we should be looking at. So it's very frustrating. So I'm going to play more of their video. Alternative energy sources, but instead they decided to lie to you, to me, and to your mom. It is now the 1980s, and for the first time, an internal memo is released at Exxon that says they need to start to emphasize the uncertainty of the scientific data around climate change. They begin to start going against their very own science and plant the seed for what we now know as climate change denial. Here is part of an internal memo from Exxon at the time. There is currently no unambiguous scientific evidence that the Earth is warming. If the Earth is on a warming trend, we're not likely to detect it before 1995. One of the most frustrating parts of this story is that Exxon did believe their climate change science. Right at this time, they started to build drilling platforms in the ocean a little bit higher up to deal with the rising sea levels they predicted. They all okay, so <laughs> he 
he's like saying that Exxon knew and they're they're trying to hide the fact that global warming is happening, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that they built their platforms a little higher because they knew about the rising sea levels. Yes, they knew about the rising sea levels. As I explained, it's consistently the rising by about two millimeters per year. So they, they actually planned for that, you know, that they built their uh, oil rigs a little bit higher to prepare for future uh, levels of water rise. So that, that's something that they knew about and they prepared for it. Uh, the internal memo, um, they, they use this a lot. And this is one of those things where it sounds evil. It sounds like they're trying to hide the evidence and stuff like that. But really what they're doing is they're giving pushback on their scientists. Their scientists are saying, well, you know, if you look at the early 80s, there was, there was a similar climate hysteria back then as well, where they were talking about global warming at that time. Now it's climate change. Um, but the, the, the point was that at that time, there was a bit of a hysteria too. And these, these climate scientists from Exxon were basically buying into it. And they were saying that there's a warming trend, but and they wouldn't be able to discover that warming trend until 1995. And the reason that the higher ups in the company said that was the problem with climate in general, and this is just a fact, is we don't have very much data. Our data with uh, regarding to temperatures and global warming is really only back to the 1970s when we developed a global radar system where we could actually check the world's temperature at any given point. And if you look at that and you use that as your model, that's a very, very small uh, view of the world's climate. It's just, it's just not a long enough period of time because uh, what they've discovered is that uh, climate is very cyclical. Uh, that it basically, you know, we have these warming trends, cooling trends, warming trends, cooling trends. And they can, there's, I, I've heard estimates of between 10 and 20 years uh, that the cycles last for. Right now, we're probably going back into a cooling cycle. Uh, and uh, the next few years, we'll get progressively cooler. Uh, so, yeah, so what will end up happening is... Um, you know, they'll probably say something to make it climate change. I don't know. But <laughs> the, the thing is, it's, it's not based on um, a long enough study. So Exxon higher-ups were saying, well, we won't know until 1995 whether or not this is just a cyclical effect or if it's a, a signs of a true global warming. So that's all they're saying. It's not like they're trying to hide anything or, or deny the science. Um, you know, this is just the fact of how their, you know, science works. So you have to actually look at it long term. You can't just uh, come up with some explanation looking at a few years of global temperatures. And if you did do that, you would come up with some crazy uh, hypothesis that is just not going to pan out. It's just not going to be true. Okay, so I'm going to play some more of his video. Also started to plan to drill in the Arctic because as they knew, the sea ice in the Arctic was going to melt. In the late 80s, the effects of climate change began to become apparent. Time magazine had a picture of the planet in shackles due to climate change on their cover as the scientific impact of burning fossil fuels became public knowledge. At the time, 80% of Americans claimed that climate change was an issue and accepted that it was caused by the burning of fossil fuels. It was also not a political issue. Here is Republican President George Bush Sr. on the campaign trail in 1988 after a year of severe heat waves killed thousands of Americans. Some say these problems are too big. That it's impossible for an individual or even a nation as great as ours to solve the problem of global warming or the loss of forests or the deterioration of our oceans. My response is simple. It can be done and we must do it. Let's not forget all that we've accomplished. All that we've accomplished since America first concentrated its attention on preserving the environment under a Republican administration 
back in 1970. This is the time when the oil companies started to get scared of that evil regulation from the government. So they started to really jack up their campaigns to increase climate change denial. They became inventive. They actually created the op ad that we now sometimes see in newspapers where it kind of looks like an article, but it's actually fully a paid advertisement. So this is one of the op ads that they paid for in the liberal New York Times. One of the brighter hopes with the climate change debate has to be the benefits achieved through technology. Notice how they use the word debate and notice how they sort of make it seem like, oh, climate change might be a good thing because we're going to invent new things to cope. They secretly paid scientists to promote fake science. In an article called Climate Change, A Degree of Uncertainty, the first line wrote, the debate on climate change has been long, complex, and intense. This is, of course, not true because according to their own science, uh, there wasn't really a debate at all. Uh, quite a short explanation that was really quite simple. It's that uh, the burning of CO2 creates a greenhouse effect that warms the earth. In 1997, Lee Raymond the CEO of Exxon at the time. Okay, I just want to address some of that. Um, so one of the things that a lot of these climate uh, pushers, like I'll call them climate pushers, um, one of the things that they push is that evil corporations are fighting against climate change because they just want to push an agenda, whatever it is. Now, what they also say that is that they want government regulation. But government regulation is the worst thing you could do. If you really care about climate change or anything like that, you don't want government regulation. Generally, what government regulation does is it actually discourages uh, growth in, in energy production and in the clean energy production. Because what ends up happening is government regulation makes it too expensive for smaller companies or any company to get involved with energy production. And what it, all it does is it maintains these big monopolies. Now, the big monopolies don't like uh, government regulation either, but uh, they at least have the budgets to deal with it. So generally, they'll try to lobby against it to prevent it as much as possible. But if it does come through, happen, they'll, they'll deal with it. But small companies can't do that. So if you if you love the world, avoid government regulations because it just hurts. Um, I'm gonna play some more of his video, but there's some there's another point that I want to make, and I'll make it later. Actually decided that in the presentation he was gonna say that no, in fact, according to their science, the Earth was cooling. This was a full lie. Again, he did this in a presentation in 1997, more than 20 years after his own scientists first broke the fact that the greenhouse effect is real. And the name of his presentation, boldly, a bold lie, was is the earth warming? Does burning fossil fuels cause global warming? Lee Raymond sucks because he also is the person who began to make climate change a political issue. Lee Raymond persuaded George Bush, the younger one, to go against his campaign promise and take carbon dioxide off the list of pollutants. These are one of the first times that we actually see climate change become a political issue, a side of left or right. And at the time, the Republican Party was under a lot of pressure from these big oil companies, and they released this memo. The scientific debate is closing against us, but not yet closed. There is still a window of opportunity to challenge the science. Later in the memo it reads, Should the public come to believe that the scientific issues around global warming are settled, their views about global warming will change accordingly. Therefore, we need to continue to make the lack of scientific certainty a primary issue of debate. All of this hard work paid off. In 2017, around 90% of Americans did not know there was a scientific consensus on global warming. 52% of Americans think the threat of climate change has been exaggerated. This lack of knowledge... Okay, so one of the things that is <laughs> driving me nuts here, um, and this is the second point that I wanted to make earlier, was science doesn't work by consensus. It comes consensus. It... So when when the Exxon was putting those op eds saying, you know, there's a debate, there really is a debate, and there's always a debate in science about whether this effect is really what's happening or not. Uh, climate change is no different than that, and, you know, there will always be a debate. Uh, and it never works by consensus. And the, you know, those reports about like 98% consensus are just totally bogus. 
and they've been debunked. There's other videos that you can look at that debunk those video, the, that claim of 98%. But science never works by consensus. It just doesn't work that way. It works by proving a, um, a hypothesis rather than, you know, people voting on what they think the, <laughs> the, the answer is. You know, it just doesn't work that way. So um, uh, when George Bush Jr. was, you know, going the opposite of his father, he was really taking a different look at it because there was this whole push uh, against the climate change theory. Like the 80s were very similar to now, the early 80s. There was like, you know, a lot of people did believe that the world was going to end back then. I mean, I remember hearing stories that by 1990 that the world would be over, just like nowadays when you hear 10 years later the world's going to end. And it's just not true. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, they told us back then that, oh, the world's going to heat up and blah, 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 and, and we're, we're going to run out of fossil fuels, and we're going to, if we use all the fossil fuels, we'll, we'll just, you know, you know, burn up and we'll all die and all this, this crazy stuff that they told us. But that was back in 1980 and referring to the 1990s. Well, now it's the year 2019, and none of that has come true. Actually, things are better than ever before. So what they're telling us is always this kind of futuristic thing, where they say 10 years in the future, the world's going to end because of our current production of fossil fuels and all this kind of stuff like that. It's just not true. And science doesn't work by consensus. So when when the climate models started to fail and it just because the, as i said it just wasn't true um the scientists were saying hey look we gotta maybe reconsider what we're saying here and the government were start was starting to say hey we should reconsider what we're we're saying here because it just wasn't panning out to be true and they were going to make decisions based on this very uncertain theory or not even theory, a hypothesis of climate change. And they were going to, you know, potentially, you know, create regulations and, and block uh, the growth of the United States as a result of these changes. So it was very serious, the implications. And when they realized that maybe things are not going the way that they expected, they, they kind of backtracked on a lot of this climate policy. So, and that was a good thing, actually, that they did, because it just wasn't the truth. It wasn't what was actually happening. So, um, I, I don't blame George Bush Jr. for doing that. Uh, but Obama obviously rewrote that anyway, so he went the other way. And he uh, realized that, um, you know, that he would go, like, a very environmental uh, way. Uh, the funny thing is, Trump, who went the opposite of Obama on, in terms of environmental policy, has actually led to the greatest reductions in <laughs> carbon dioxide. So it's funny that the government, the Obama government, actually had higher rates of carbon dioxide production than when Trump took over. And part of the reason for that was Trump deregulated and just made it easier for companies to create alternative methods of using uh, or creating fuel and, you know, using energy sources. So it was kind of interesting that um, you would expect the opposite, but that's how it was. Um, I want to play more of the video. Helped Rex Tillerson, who became the CEO of Exxon after it merged with Mobile to become Exxon Mobile, to sign a $500 billion deal to explore for oil in the rapidly thawing Russian Arctic. For this plan, he was awarded the Russian Order of Friendship. Global warming and climate change is caused by our immense burning of coal, gas, and oil for energy. This causes the carbon release to combine with oxygen in the atmosphere to produce CO2 carbon dioxide, which traps heat that would have been radiated back out into space. Due to this, the extra heat trapped near Earth is equivalent to the heat from 400,000 bombs the size of what was dropped on Hiroshima being collected in our atmosphere every day. 
By 2100, the rising sea levels will cost the world $14 trillion. Nine of the 10 deadliest heat waves in recorded human history have occurred since the year 2000. Since the 1970s, 60% of the world's wildlife has been killed. If we continue with our current greenhouse gas emissions, Okay, just those three claims, I just wanted to quickly debunk it. Um, the 14 trillion one um, with the rising sea levels, who knows? I'm not sure if that's actually true. Um, the reason I say that that could be true and it doesn't have anything to do with climate change is what's hap what happens is uh, humans have a tendency of building along the sea coast. And as there's more people on the planet, you put more homes and buildings and stuff along the sea coast, well, natural weather <laughs> will destroy those things. Uh, it's just a fact of life that if you build something and you build more stuff along the sea coast, well, natural storms will potentially destroy that stuff and there'll be more damage economically as a result. It has nothing to do with climate change that you could have done that a million years ago and just build a whole bunch of things along the sea coast and it would have done the same thing. It just how much you spend on building along the seacoast is the only thing that you're measuring there. Uh, you're looking more at uh, human like real estate issues rather than actual climate change issues when you're looking at that. In terms of the warmest heat waves, that that is one of those, again, where they, they don't really look at it in historical context um, because they look at it where we have better figures now so if you have like more uh, sources of information where you can really say, okay, the late, la last heat wave killed 100 people, for example, uh, and before you didn't have any way of calculating that number, well, you're going to say, well, look, with the number is now 100. Before, we never knew. <laughs> it doesn't mean that the numbers weren't higher before. It just means that we weren't able to calculate it. So a lot of these stats are like, based on having much better analytical information about what's happening in the world. So totally meaningless, okay? Uh, and again, the forest fire one is debunked I, I, earlier in this video. So it's really frustrating <laughs> hearing all this stuff because it's all just easily debunked. Okay, so let's play some more. By 2070, tropical regions that now get one day a year of oppressive humid heat will get between 100 to 250 days per year. 100 million trees died in California in the past 10 years. And studies show that by 2050, if temperatures rise the way that they are predicted, a quarter of the earth will experience extreme droughts and desertification. Stephen Hawking gave humanity a deadline of a century to leave earth as it may be the only way to save ourselves. And who is going to be able to afford this? Maybe Lee Raymond, as his retirement package from ExxonMobil was a mere $400 million for his impressive work of making money for the company at your expense. Climate change is real. I was lied to, you were lied to, your parents were lied to, and these oil companies did all of this because they were short-sighted. They wanted to make money for themselves. But we need to think about the future, and we as young people are the ones who are left to kind of figure out this mess. It's not necessarily our fault. This is a huge injustice. All these lies and deceit that these companies did to the public consciousness are unfair, but we have to figure out what we do now. In our next video, we're gonna talk about hope. So one thing Okay, so this is just the end of his video. Uh, he doesn't really talk anymore about climate change. Um, but there's a few things I actually want to say that I agree with him in this video. Climate change has become partisan, and that is a bad thing. Uh, the right will be like, oh, there is no climate change. The left will be there. There is climate change, and it's going to kill us in 10 years or whatever number of years that they say. Um, and that's just, it's just not how science should be done. It's not how um, we move forward on this issue. Now, I do believe that pollution is a problem. I do believe that we should look into pollution, like the pollution of, of the oceans and seas and lakes is a real problem. Uh, deforestation is a problem. Even though I said the world's getting greener, what happens is, you are, natural habitats are being destroyed and that is an issue and you'll get you know group uh, species 
that will die as a result. And I don't personally like that. I think we should do things to fix that. But this climate change <laughs> conspiracy, it's a conspiracy really, uh, of the world's gonna end in 10 years or whatever, it's just not true. And it's, it's, it's actually creating a real problem in our society where we're, we're creating these legislations and rules that are not actually solving the real problems that face our planet. And that's what I'm concerned about. That's why I make this kind of video, because I want people to understand that the science that they're talking about is just not right. Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's so wrong that um, it's creating um, a real uh, campaign and it's a very partisan campaign, campaign where these governments will like spend trillions of dollars fighting a non-issue. Like CO2, not a problem, not really a problem. These other issues that I described are real problems. And for a fraction of the cost, we can solve those other problems. And if you really want to solve carbon dioxide as being an issue, then there shouldn't be some of these things that they tie into it. I did a video about that. I'll maybe link that in the des description as well, where you can check out my other video where I say how you can tell that they're not being sincere about climate change. And you can really check that video out and see what my arguments are there, where I show that all of this is more of a political game than actually expressing real concern about the environment. So this has been socially triggered. What do you think? <laughs> what is, are these companies just evil and they just want to pollute the world and destroy everything? Or is there more nuance to it and we might not actually see the whole picture because it is so partisan and each side is telling their own story. And it would be really nice to know what the real story is. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. Bye.